Emerald, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald, Amagora. And I'm remembering memes. And we're going to start off this episode by getting rid of the sore losers. So, have you ever seen... Uh, I right, had that. What? What do we have? Oh, we have that. Yeah, better uh, Norman. Alright, better Norman. Um, have you ever seen Goofy scenes uh, Wake Me Up Inside? No, but you've told me about it. We still need Kitensu. He's still an HM slave. Eh, we don't need his HM right now, though. Fair. So, Force of Habit. Yes, Force of Habit. Uh, so, I absolutely love Goofy Sings Wake Me Up Inside. And anyone who hasn't seen it definitely needs to go see it, because it's hilarious. Because the dude that does it is a legitimately good goofy impersonator. He is really good. But like I, I I don't know like how to say it better than that. He's just legit good at what he does, and it's amazing. For anyone wondering, this building here is the Pokemon Daycare. You can leave your Pokemon here and as you walk around they will slowly level up. If they happen to be compatible egg groups, which is something you can really only learn by looking at them and guessing, or looking it up, then they can in fact have an egg which will hatch into whatever the mother was. Or, in the case of a ditto, hatch into whatever wasn't a ditto. Actually, open the Pokedex. Does that show egg groups in this gym? Let's, pay, uh, let's try it with the Pokemon we have. Uh, go over to the other things. I know that it did, or I'm pretty sure it did in the Gen 1 remakes, but I didn't think the normal Gen 3 games had it. I could have sworn it had a thing. I feel like it did in the Gen 1 remakes. Maybe, is there a search option in the Pokedex? I don't remember for this. Anna and Meg. Oh, hey, one of the 2020 Judge travel mats for Yu-Gi-Oh! is... Hella, Generator Boss of Doom. So I need that. In their first ever two-part map. So I need that. I love the Generator. I prefer the Nordic and as far as Nordic archetypes go. I mean, yes. But I just love the fact that the Generator aren't, like, a Nordic archetype. They're, like, video game archetype based on the Norse gods. I still want to try a tag between the Nordic and the Generator. You have a Nordic deck, I have a really well-functioning Generator deck. Come on. Ah. We just need to go to the shop, find some fools stupid enough to play us. Alright, let me correct that. Find some fools stupid enough to play you. We all know my luck is terrible. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to carry the whole there. game. Unless I'm using the Luna Light, because then it doesn't matter what I draw, I'm fusion summoning and you can't stop me. <laughs> oh please, you could brick with a meta deck. With a meta deck, yes. With a deck built by me, also yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've shown that on video. I want to say on stream, but it's not a stream. I don't stream often. On screen. Stream. I have streamed before and I do do it occasionally, sometimes on my YouTube channel, very rarely on Twitch. I usually do Twitch, but I don't really do it much at all anyway, so... I don't think any of my streams, except maybe one or two, uh, were done at a point when I had a headset yet, so they aren't exactly great, especially since they were just done with the share button on the PlayStation, but... Yeah, they're there. I, look, I feel like my greatest stream so far has been my Rainbow Six one with Cody. Because A, Cody's hilarious, and... B, it's Rainbow Six. People want to see that because, you know, it's the meta game right now. It's like the biggest uh, first person shooter out there right now. And I say that as an Overwatch player who loves to watch the Overwatch League. Overwatch League is legitimately enjoyable to watch. Oh, absolutely. Especially if there's a Widow in there, or like a Hanzo. Just seeing the way they aim and somehow always headshot. Jeez! So amazing. Uh, 
This battle feels very boring compared to some of the others. Yeah, he's a breeder. Yeah, I know. Trying to get those perfect IVs. Wasting his time. Says the dude who does that in later games. I will not shh. Okay, I'll shh. Shut up. <laughs> Is that better? Make me. Don't make me. I wish to breathe. Oh. Shoot. You might want to see this. Wow. Someone decided to underdog. I'm sorry. What? Sorry, I just looked what up the current the... standings for Overwatch League. How even? Like, they came out of nowhere, I guess. They were in, like, 12th place the last time I checked. Maybe they hadn't had any games yet. Because uh, they're, oh they're not showing Lord. a lot. Holy crap. Guess they had a good week, too. Oh, I guess so. So, uh, for reference, what we're talking about is we've been paying attention to the uh, to the league this uh, this season, especially well. I haven't checked in a few days, so he pulled up the standings currently. So Philadelphia Fusion is still in first place, where we left them at when we last checked. And that's just due to small point discrepancies. Yeah, that is literally due to, like, the minorest of point discrepancies. Like, it's two rounds lost more that my team was behind them. And one draw. And a draw. Um, my team, by the way, being the Houston Outlaws. Which are in third place. They don't have any full game losses, but they have lost parts of games. Yeah, they've lost... They've lost rounds? They've lost some battles, but never the wars. They've lost rounds, but never a full game this season. They are kicking ass this season. They're doing so much better than they did last season. And the greatest part is, in their last game, they swept the entire thing. 3-0, and without their star damage. Like, they did not have their star player in their last game. The reason he's a big fan of them is because they are, some of their team members are legitimately the people who taught him to play Overwatch. Yeah, I went to uh... RTX? Uh, yeah, Rooster Teeth Expo in Texas a few years ago, and they were there, and I had never played Overwatch before, and before, uh, like, they were facing fans, you know, just casual, friendly games, you know, giving people tips, and I had never played Overwatch before, so they sat down with me, they told me, you know, here's the controls, here are some tips and tricks for this character, that character, what do you feel like you're gonna do, uh, what character do you like, you know, take a few rounds, figure out all this kind of stuff. Really good, helpful tips. They are legitimately the ones who taught me how to play, and I don't think any of them except Dante are still on the team from that, or I could be mis misremembering and they could have like drafted him onto the team later on. I'm not entirely sure. It's been three years ago. Point is, uh, they taught me how to play, so I I'm really appreciative of that, and just meeting them made me realize how much they are good. Like, all of the members at that point in time were just genuinely good people because they were willing to help someone who didn't know the game during the game. But they are currently in third place, which is still amazing. But Philadelphia Fusion is currently tied with what is technically second place, but technically also first place. Because it's a complete tie. Which is the Washington Justice. Who were lower on the chart last time I checked. I could be wrong about what their place was. I'm not sure. But they came out of nowhere. <laughs> like, they weren't in the top five, to my knowledge. And they just steamrolled everything. I don't know, that's... That being said, for them and Philadelphia both, one loss is going to throw that off. One loss is going to throw that off. Uh, Same goes for Houston, though. Yeah. 
But that's only if, like, any of the other teams get a win, because all the other teams have at least one loss. <laughs> and then Vancouver, and London, and I am not going to pretend I can pronounce that. And I don't remember the actual name of this team. Los Angeles is where they're from. Uh, Vancouver, Los Angeles, London, and Hangzhou. I, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't pronounce it. I know it's like uh, an Asian word. I don't know where it is. All I see is the word spark, so... It's in really light blue in the pink. My first guess would be Hangzhou, but I don't exactly claim to be a, uh expert on the language, so... Yeah, we'd need to know what country it's in, first of all. Because that depend That will decide how they pronounce, like, the O-U and everything. And how pronunciated the Z is as well. Uh, point is, they all have zero wins, with Vancouver having four losses. Poor Vancouver. Poor Vancouver. They were doing pretty good last year. Uh, yeah, this is... The dragons are doing pretty good. Shanghai dragons? Mm-hmm. They're at two and one. They've only had three games so far. Mm. The Shock are 2 and 1. That one being against Houston. <laughs> you tried uh, to say they were arguably the best team, too. Yeah, for the longest time, the Shock were like the guys to beat. And then this year. They got beat. They got beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, the Slap can learn cut. They got beat pretty handily, too, because they're the ones with... I, I'm not saying that as, like, a bragging way, but the Shock are the ones that tie, got the tie round with Houston. But they are currently 8-4-1 for win-loss tie. And, like, the ones one step up from them have played one more game than them, so, you know, if fair, they have more points, they've played an extra game. Uh... But they're at 10-4-0. Uh, hmm. uh, if Shock has one perfect game, they instantly go up to 4. Okay, that's probably enough uh, Overwatch League stats, though, for our Pokemon Emerald video. You can never have enough Overwatch stats. I want to play Overwatch now. I know, right? But I also want to play some ESO. I know, right? I want to take a nap. I also want to take a nap. <laughs> I worked ten hours yesterday with some breaks and had to go in three hours early this morning, too. Okay, so there's a revive and a wild encounter. Probably a bull beat. No illuminous. Figured it'd be one of them, just didn't know which. Oh. Now my lord. That being said, while I might very well wind up trying to complete the decks for this channel just for fun, I'm not working on it right now. What the hell? Culinary cosplayer shows how to make a Super Mario Yoshi egg sandwich? That sounds both interesting and morbid. Yeah. Anyway, for anyone wondering, I'm hoping that exploring these routes will get us enough experience to be able to do a little better against Watson without having to do any off-screen grinding. Yeah, if we grind, I might even do it off-screen. I might just upload it as like a special episode in conjunction with another one day. That way it doesn't take up a time slot for anyone who wants to see the story, but you also don't have to miss it. The slab is like handily beating this dust ox based on that last hit. Okay, this is gonna take it out. Yeah, it's. Oh, no, it uh... didn't! The slab is just handily beating this dust ox. Maybe not. It's a risk, but I'm gonna see. Yep, Damn. Gust again. Gust did one damage last time. Oh. <laughs> see, I didn't know that. I was expecting <laughs> it to do more. I was looking at them stats. Though. No, confusion was the frightening move. 
Alright. <laughs> well. Followed by a beautify. I, I'm not going to push it. Yeah, don't push my luck here. <laughs> Send up the one we know is going to win handily. I can't believe that went like that. I honestly expected that Dustox to do a lot more damage. Yeah. It's what I get for uh, estimating a bug type at all. Yeah. See, the Beautify acted like a bug type for sure. Low health, no defense? No. You only see it for a second. That's how I was going to put it. Low health, no defense. Let's see. I'm going to try to skip past these trainers and get to some health. I forgot that running Four. makes them turn. That's fine. We'll just switch train. Not that, <laughs> not that the uh, slab really needs it. I think he's only like a level below everyone else now. That's a low level wingle. It's it, a low health slab. I know, uh, it's really tempting. But I don't want to push it. So we'll go with Harvey Face. Probably get hit with a water gun real quick. Yeah. Or Super Sonic. Missed? Sweet. So if we hadn't switched, I could have screamed mine like a steel trap. <laughs> right all up in the microphone. I just thought of that. I think it was a star bomb thing about Dan and Aaron seeing who can get closer to the microphone. Then I bet I can get close. I don't want them choking on it. I don't know if that was a star bomb thing or just a. Uh, I don't bomb remember. Thing. I don't remember. Wow, that's been a while. I feel like it was in like an intro or outro to a star bomb thing, but it could be wrong. It might be. I know they like to do stuff like like to do stuff like that. That's just a like. It's not completely impossible. They might release a star bomb at least single every now and then in you know future years if they want to go back to it. I hope they do. I enjoy star bomb immensely. I I, I think the uh, wording they used in the last album is probably the last album, or what might possibly be the last album. Nothing. No, I don't remember. Wasn't it like? What might possibly be the last full album? Maybe. My point is, I don't think they use definite words to say there won't be more. I think they just implied that they're probably right. Yeah. But, you know, that does leave it open for, say, in ten years, they wanted to do another song just as a callback. They could. I mean, obviously, Dan is still doing NSP. Yeah. Which is great, because NSP is legitimately one of my favorite bands. Yeah, it's just Starbomb without the... Bomb. Without Aaron, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. He still tends to make it into their videos, though. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. They live, like, two blocks from each other. I know. Are you face route to level 21? I'm still wishing I could afford to do what Mark Larry did and buy a $4 million house at $15,000 over the asking price. Just to flex. Just to flex. I mean, it's probably not just a flex. It looks like a really nice house. Mm -hmm. Obviously. But that, that'd be nice. You, my point is, you would do it just to flex on someone if you could. Like, oh, did I pay you too much? My bad. I don't usually handle bills this small. I, you know what? Sarcasm included, that's exactly how I'd sound. <laughs> You know the sad what? part is, when I'm handed a 20, I'm usually like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't usually handle bills this large. When you're handed a 5, you're like that. No, I have $5. Yeah. At $5 until I got dinner last night. Is it a bill? No. Exactly. <laughs> $3 in Bitcoin. <laughs> the way the world works $3. now is when you get paid, you still don't see the money. You just see a number on a screen. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I don't usually handle money. You know, we used to have a gold standard, and then we moved to, like, a government-mandated money is worth this much, but I think we're on the verge of evolving into the cryptocurrency standard at this rate. Yeah, it's worth this much because this many people have it, and that's it. There's no way to really earn it unless you're a flogging genius. And I'm not trying to talk political, I'm just, you know, making jokes. 
it, it legitimately is the evolution of currency. We used to have, like, you know, bartering this is worth this because of weight and or, like, usefulness. And then we got to this is worth this because my government says so. And then we got, or we got to this is worth this because it's made of this rare thing that my government says is worth this much. And then we got to, uh, yeah, this piece of paper is worth this much. And now we're at, uh, you know, my government says I have this much money, so this is how much money I have. And we're slowly evolving into the era of, you know, this is what my government says I'm worth based on what I've been doing with my life because, you know, I've worked for this long, I have earned this much. That's essentially what net worth is. You know, you have this much money, it's how much you're worth. What's in your wallet? Uh, let's find out. <laughs> Anyhow, here we have Wally's aunt and uncle. And she mentions that her girlfriend's boyfriend, or his, her daughter's boyfriend, is very dedicated. I don't know, she's got a secret to tell her husband. Anyway, is very dedicated at trying to dig a tunnel. If you remember, we've been in that tunnel from the other side before. And here's Wally. So in my wallet, I have a receipt. So something saying that you used to have money. A receipt for Chinese food. Alright. So something saying I used to have money I could actually spend. Um, my debit card. Oh, right. My uh, card that lets me use the money I put in my stocks, because that's nice. Um, that, that, it's not a lot. It's been staying about the same price, so I'm not really gaining anything. Uh, an expired learner's permit. <laughs> because despite and being well ID. into his adult age, he doesn't have a license yet. I didn't get one until a few years ago. Listen, I've had no chances to use a car until, like, recently, when you have to make a reservation, like, three months in advance. Um, that's just because I haven't had access to a vehicle. Here we have one of the most memorable things about Emerald, in my opinion, or about Gen 3, in my opinion, the Winstreet family, whose names are all based on the word victory. So we start with Winstreet Victor. It's a family of, I think, four that we battle in a row. There is a fifth member, but you don't meet him here. That being said, as an Easter egg, I do believe he's included in Victory Road but on the way to the Elite Four. But his name isn't Winstreet. I think his title is Ace Trainer. I could be wrong. Oh, some dust bunnies. Oh. And I think that might be a bat back there in the back. I was going to ask if there were any crickets. Nah, I'm too cool for crickets. You know, they provide music. And it's a fancy sport. Yeah. Even if it's a simple sport. Yeah. Nope, no cricket. Anyway, hey, Cricket um, is what cell phone provider I have. I have Boost, because I, I, I need a Boost. Yeah, how great would it be if getting a phone from Cricket came with a free Cricket sound ringtone? Do you know how often I would set that to certain <laughs> people? Just so I know who not to answer, so I can make the joke. There's still one very specific phone call, or phone... Ringtone I want. <clears throat> a phone call is here. A phone call is here. I want that. From My Hero Academia. Specifically the dub one, just so everyone else can understand what it's saying to. Because uh, it sucks when you set something to be in Japanese and then get questioned about it by everyone. Right? Twice. Right? Minimum. Oh yeah, Jeff Bloom is starting a D&D podcast soon. <laughs> Do you know about that? That's great. First of all, because it's Jeff freaking Goldblum. Hey, all found a pretty strong trainer. He runs back inside, lets his wife come out. Great trainer to meet my husband. My turn now. I think the point is that they're supposed to be successively stronger than the last one, too. So, supposed to be. 
we beat Victor, next is Victoria. Who's using a single Rosalia. So we'll still continue using the Slab, who lost all of 5 HP last battle. And it's about to lose a whole lot more. Oh, apparently Jeff Goldblum has revealed what he's going to be playing, or at least the race he's going to be playing, in said D&D podcast. He's going to be an elf. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh, now the Slab's getting hit with Stun Spore. That might actually affect these battles a good bit. Starting right there. We don't have any Cherry Berries, do we? Even if we do, I don't want to waste a turn with the Rosalia out. Paralyzed again. Because I think we're still in one hit kill range for it. I mean, I wasn't saying like now, but if we like later on during one of the other members swap out for some reason, we could swap to something that hopefully won't take very much damage. Anyhow, there's the second win straight down. Oh, I wish I'd known about this sooner. Stronger than Mommy? Wow, but I'm strong too, really, honestly. I wish I'd known about this soon. Apparently... Oh, no, never mind. Too far away. Went straight Vivi. Apparently in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I think that's what WI is, right? Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a uh, two-day event featuring Chevelle and Hailstorm. Hmm. That's an interesting... I'm still more so looking forward to the Blue Ridge Ra Rock Festival, because Sabaton... So yeah, at this point, the slab is officially switching out for the fun guy. You know, sometimes on YouTube I hate people's grammar. Finally, Ash's All Pokemons returns. Ash's Charizard Infernape returned. I promise anyone watching he's not talking about you guys. Feel free to comment. No, I'm, I'm mainly talking about, like, people who post but don't understand how the human language you know there are multiple human languages, right? Nah, there's... There's American and... American. No, there's like... Two human languages. You speak understandable... I was joking. No, you, you speak understandable, where, you know, you actually say your words, and you speak, uh... Can't speak, where you are in you legitimately ruled out sign language, though, which is a real language. Yes, but that's understandable if you know sign language. That's not like... Your exact wording, though, is the language you actually speak, and then what you did. You very you speak much... speak sign language. I'm not sure speak would be the right word. That is the actual word for it. Really? Yes. Hmm. You speak sign language. You know sign language, but if you actively use it, you speak it. See, I've only ever heard people refer to that as you sign. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's how I had always been told, even through school, was you speak sign language. Because it is a language. And while you don't actively make noise most of the time, uh, sometimes, <laughs> sorry. Hit your sometimes. hands a little too hard together. Go looking like Naruto. Well, my point is, like, some people do speak, speak when they're signing to someone, just so people who don't know sign can understand what they're saying as well, mm -hmm. or, like, to make sure that their brain is using the right signs or whatever. But yeah, plenty of people who, you know, learn sign language just for using it as a way to communicate will speak and sign at the same time, I know. Yeah, which is really interesting. I can't do that. I have forgotten most of the sign language I knew. Me too. Which I knew a good bit of it. Me too. When but, straight Vicky is the fourth one, the grandma. But now I can remember like some like very minor basic stuff, but not a whole lot. But uh, yeah, you have a language you speak. Or, okay, a language you use that someone might be able to understand. And then you have a language you use so sporadic, not sporadically, um, what's the word I'm trying to use here? So, inopportunely, maybe, I don't know, uh, where 
if it's a language you speak. Uh, if it's a language you speak, no one can understand what you're saying, or if it's sign language, your movements are like too rapid or fidgety or anything like that. Looking it up. Yes, this is a very interesting question. I wanted to find an answer. I don't know if there's any... I don't know if there's a decisive thing on this. and That's weird. Hmm. Well, I'm going to launch the next Mega Drain while I continue looking. It's probably a good idea. She have seven hundred and twenty dollars. Sorry, poke. She invited us in. What a nice granny. Hello, Grandmama. So it seems like what I'm finding is essentially it is um something that people debate. Here we are. This is what I was looking for. I took over while he's looking this up. We got the Macho Brace, which, if I'm not mistaken, increases attack when you string terrain? Maybe, I'm not sure. That being said, I did find out that someone at least argues, I don't know if it's, you know, 100%, something that the world agrees on or not, but knowing sign language and another language does make you bilingual. I'm not sure if that's the, like, officially recognized decision or not. I mean, it but at least someone's arguing for it, makes sense. and it makes sense. Yeah. I, that's another curiosity I've had for a long time. Nope. Wrong button. Uh, promotes growth, but reduces speed. So it'd be great for someone who's naturally very slow anyway. Yeah, it reduces the, uh... Or for someone like Ninjas, who's so fast that even with reduced speed, it shouldn't yeah. be outsped. Uh, it doesn't reduce speed while it's being held. It reduces the speed gain through level uh, up. It reduces the speed gain through level up, but increases the amount of experience you get, or something like that. Um... I could be wrong. Again... It's not an item I usually use. Oh, you get to the Pokemon Center. I'm gonna look it up for sure. Uh, down. Where's the nearest center? Down. All right. It's the Malvo one. It's down and then to the right. Let's Did I see. Did not run into a uh, sign. It doubles all EVs gained by the holder during a battle. Stacks with Pokerus, it does not affect effort values gained from vitamins. The speed stat of the Pokemon holding it is halved during battle. So yeah, oh, so it's not a uh, like gain half. It's just while it's held. Yeah, while held, it lowers speed oh. but increases EV gain, which isn't something we're gonna do much of anyway. Yeah, it's not worth worrying about if you're just doing a single player run of the story. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, anyway, having said that, we have reached the end of this episode. Next episode, which will be next weekend, we will kick off with a battle against Watson again to see if we're ready. If not, might do a bit of off-screen grinding, because that's more or less all we can do. Unless, yeah. unless someone wants any rematches. I haven't checked that. I haven't, I haven't really uh, done much for that egg. Doesn't look like anyone does, so I'm pretty sure a symbol pops up by them if they do. Yeah. So, having said that, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, feel free to hit that subscribe button to follow us for more content. I hope you stay safe and have a wonderful night. A symbol pops up if they've called you an offer. We have the option to call them.
we should do that next time though.